Hi, I'm Brian Mallow, coming to you live from the 72nd Lindau Nobel Laureate meeting here in beautiful Lindau, Germany, where we are with one of the 600 young scientists here this year, uh, Sergei Velejko. Yeah, correct. <laughs> correct enough, I suppose. Um, and uh, he's one of the young scientists here who had almost attended back in 2020, but has had to wait 33 years, three years just to be. See, yep. I'm the one who is flubbing the language and we can't do a second take. You'll be fine. Okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, he's Ukrainian working, uh, formerly, like originally if you'd come here, you would have been a German uh, candidate, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. But uh, you're Max at Harvard. Max Planck nominated me, but yeah. now I moved to Harvard Medical School. Excellent. And uh, mm -hmm. you're not a medical doctor, you're a researcher, postdoc? Yeah. I'm a postdoc in the lab of George Church. George Church? Yeah, he's pretty famous. Yeah, I've met him. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. George Church is, uh, he's a... Synthetic biologist. Synthetic biologist. Yeah. And uh, that's very cool. You didn't tell mm -hmm. me that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, you're working, so you you mentioned stem cells is yeah. your field. Yes. What about stem cells? What do you, what's, what's what are you working so on? So I study the stemmiest stem cells, which are coming from the early embryo, but you can also generate them kind of artificially over, by overexpressing some uh, transcription factors. And I discovered how the whole thing works. And now we, have, for the first time, have stem cells that can generate whole human bodies. Okay, let's step back just a little <laughs> bit. Um, what are stem cells? They are a special kind of cells that can proliferate forever, so they're kind of immortal, uh, but they also can differentiate into different tissues. When you or say organs. they proliferate, you mean they reproduce? Yeah, they can so self reproduce. Stem cells make more stem cells. Correct. And but they also, under certain conditions, can generate other tissues and organs. And pluripotent stem cells are special in the way that they can do anything, including even the whole body. So some stem cells are destined to only become a certain type of cell? That's adult stem cells, yeah. So okay. for example, blood, adult bone marrow stem cells would generate blood. Skin cells, skin stem cells would generate skin. Okay, so there's a variety um, of types of stem cells. Yeah, but what I'm talking about doesn't exist in adult body. It only exists in the very beginning when there are just two cell types. One will make placenta and another one will make the whole thing. So only in the womb? Yeah, it ex exists just a few days after uh, fertilization. What happens to them afterwards? They just disappear. They, they become the whole body. I mean, not disappear, they, 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 they give rise to the whole body, basically. All cells, all the different types of, all the different cell types started as stem yeah, cells? Yeah, exactly. Your whole body started from one cell type. It's called pluripotent stem cell. Yeah. Excellent. So, uh, what part of that are you working on? So I was trying to figure out uh, the, the few transcription factors that the kind of master regulators that control the whole, this pluripotent stem cell fate. So they kind of jumpstart the whole, uh, the whole network that, that, that basically established this pluripotent stem cells. Yeah. 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 So, so there is a technology called uh, iPS cell technology, which was discovered by Shinya Yamanaka in 2006. He got a Nobel Prize for that, which is uh, where you take skin cells or blood cells, so adult, uh, adult cells, and you can convert them back to uh, <laughs> convert them back to this embryonic stem cell-like state. So you don't really need to embryos anymore. You can derive them artificially from uh, regular cells. And so yeah. what are the implications of that? Uh, so this was the work uh, from 2006. Now the whole stem cell field is using these iPS cells. But only mouse and rats, so only the two rodents models, had the stem cells that actually can make not just like separate tissues, but can make the whole body. That's very special for the mouse basically. And for this, this has been done first time by Martin Evans, who got Nobel Prize. He is here. I talked to him. That was cool. <laughs> uh, and also then those stem cells could be used to generate 
uh, genetically modified animals. That's why mouse knockouts uh, exist, but almost no other animals uh, exist like that. So Mario Capacci, uh, who is also here, uh, he was the first one to make this mouse knockout using the mouse embryonic stem cells that were derived first by Martin Evans. So, but for, for more than, like, this was in 81, so six years before I was born. And, uh, and that's all, like, we don't have any other animals, just the mouse, basically, and, and rat, and it's not even really that reproducible. And, uh, and all the rest of the stem cells from other species, including human, cannot really make full bodies. They can just generate some tissues when you induce them, but they are incapable. And I figured out how mouse stem cells work, uh, how they do it, like how they can create the whole body, uh, I mean, what drives this, and, I, and now we have the technology to make any animal like this, wow. including human. So what, do you, what, what next? What are you looking to do next with it? Um, I'm working with a company that produces pigs for human organ <laughs> transplantation. Okay. So first thing I want to, I really want to do is to produce first piglets from stem cells. Let me ask you, take it back a little. Um, did you always know you wanted to be a scientist or go in this type of, this type of science? Uh, or did you have some other dream job? Not really. When, when I first heard about like DNA and genes at and about the possibility of changing the DNA uh, and create new organisms. I wanted to be a uh, genetic engineer, always. Uh, I mean, starting from middle school. Yeah. So, and that's what I became, kind of. Yeah. You know, are there any misconceptions that you think, like, uh, that the public has about this kind of work, about stem cells, or about the kind of sci about science in general, or your science specifically? Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe media misconceptions, like you see something in movies or television, and that's a terrible depiction, and it's nothing like that. Hmm. Maybe in the field of genetic engineering in general. Um, hmm. There are misconceptions about stem cells derived from embryos. They think that somehow you destroy actual human beings or like even animals. Uh, but that's bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Because the the stem cell, the embryonic stem cells, are derived from the stage that is pre-implantation, which is just a few days after fertilization, when we just have one cell type, just one cell type. We don't have nervous system yet not even nervous stem cells yet. It's just the one cell type that will give rise to the whole thing and, and those cells cannot feel anything. Uh, they are... I mean, that embryo is stupider than, uh, than, uh, than a plant. And we know how dumb plants are. Yeah, yeah they're pretty dumb. So um, <laughs> here we are at the meeting that you've been waiting a few years to attend. Mm -hmm. um, have you, and we're only a couple days in, but have you had any highlights? You already mentioned at yeah. least one laureate that you met. Yeah, I got to talk to Emmanuel Charpentier, the discoverer of CRISPRs. That was cool. I, I got to talk to her for a few hours. A few hours? Yeah, that was exciting. Then I got to present. Were you talking about research? Were you yeah. talking about other? Yeah, oh, everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, that, was, that was nice. And uh, I got to present my work to Martin Evans and Mario Capacchi. Uh, who um, who basically were the first people to work with uh, mouse stem cells. So they were excited to hear about the possibility to do other animals now. That was cool. Yeah, did you get good feedback from them? Uh, yeah, Did definitely. they ask you any challenging yeah. questions? They, uh, I mean, Mario asked me to send the manuscript to his email, so I did. Excellent. Yeah, so I think it's going to be maybe a start of collaboration. Who knows? Yeah. Do you do any, any like this is, we're doing science communication here, mm -hmm. is that uh, a, 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 something you've done? Have you done other science communication events? No, so first really? thing, first time. You, okay, well, just yeah. the science. What about the themes here? Um, there's been a diversity theme and AI, like it's a medicine physiology meeting, but there's also AI and climate change, and uh, those are a little different from your field, but is there uh, anything there that you... I mean, those are uh, important topics, yeah. but 
I, I, I'm not in the field too. I, I don't yeah. think I can really have valuable input there. But, do you th what yeah. about, since AI is such a big thing here, do you think any AI tools are gonna be useful? Anywhere? In biology? Yeah. Sure, they already used, for example, the, the AlphaGo, the, the, the artificial intelligence based uh, prediction of uh, protein structure it has been very useful even for my research. It's great. Uh, yeah. It's basically instead of trying for years to crystallize proteins, you can just fold them in computer in, in a few hours. What else is going on in George Church's lab? Um, hmm. Is it all <laughs> the kind of stuff that that you're doing, or if there must be other? Yeah, he's, he's all over the place. He has people working on synthetic biology of bacteria. He works on rejuvenation of uh, yeah, humans, potentially. Then, yeah, he, w he works on all kinds of tools for research. Yeah, he's, he's, he has very broad interests. Yeah. He, he has a huge lab, one of the biggest in Harvard. Yeah. When, uh, so this meeting is very interdisciplinary. Do you feel like you get anything from, there's people here that are studying things that are so different from you, and the, the presenters as well as the young scientists, but do you think like there's like, po like interesting possibilities, maybe collaborative possibilities or anything, or yeah. are they too far? Yeah, <laughs> maybe, uh, <laughs> too, maybe they're, yeah, like too far afield or. No, there, there are a few yeah. people from my field here, so, yeah. it, uh, and also, very related field like like uh, CRISPR Cas9, for example. Yeah. Uh, Could you, so, you, for, you know, I don't know that much about CRISPR, but it's about gene editing, right? Yeah. And it, it, it's this is the little understanding I have. It's based on a mechanism in nature, right? Yeah. It's uh, it's immune system of bacteria that they uh, that Emmanuel and Charpentier and Jennifer Doudna and others found the way to report basically reprogram them to edit instead of edit like acting to destroy viruses that this is how bacteria use this thing we now use it for uh, editing cell like genomes including and human genomes which is pretty cool yeah um at the opening right after the opening ceremony sunday night um francis arnold gave a great talk on genetic engineering. Was that a good talk to you? Like you're yeah. a specialist in the field and I'm a non, I thought it was more remarkable because I think it was interesting to me, the non-scientist, but now you're totally in that field. It was also interesting to you. I'm not exactly in the field of like, she is in the field of enzyme engineering. So okay. that's, that's slightly different. Uh, but the talk was really one of the best. She, she She's like such a great, uh, speaker yeah, yeah she was funny she, and she was yeah. she was hilarious and yeah. yeah was definitely one of my favorites if not my favorite yeah excellent she was great well thanks for taking the time to talk to me i hope it was relatively painless um i hope i didn't deceive you about thank you that. for having me <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be hearing from uh many more of the uh young scientists here at the 72nd annual the now nobel laureate